Hello, my name is Councillor Jonathan Everson. I'm the Mayor of North Lincolnshire. Today is Holocaust Memorial Day. The Council has supported this special day for the last 20 years by hosting a short ceremony. This year, due to the pandemic, we need to find another way to support and mark this important anniversary in North Lincolnshire. I decided to invite local young people to record some short passages about the Holocaust and subsequent genocides. I also invited my chaplain to record a short prayer. Additionally, Church Square House will be illuminated in purple tonight in support of Holocaust Memorial Day. The theme this year is Be the Light in the Darkness. This theme asks everyone to consider different kinds of darkness. For example, identity-based persecution, misinformation, denial of justice, and different ways to bring the light. For example, resistance, acts of solidarity, rescue, and illuminating mistruths. The utterly unprecedented times through which we are living currently are showing the very best which humanity is capable of. But in some of the abuse and conspiracy theories being spread on social media, the much darker side of our world. We mark this special day by remembering the millions of men, women and children killed in the Holocaust under Nazi persecution and in more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. The Holocaust between 1941 and 1945, six million Jewish men, women and children had been murdered by the Nazis and their collaborators. Their attempt to murder all the Jews in Europe shook the foundations of civilization. The Nazis used propaganda, persecution and legislation to deny human and civil rights to German Jews. This approach was repeated across Eastern Europe in other countries occupied by the Nazis. By the end of the Holocaust, six million Jewish men women and children had been murdered in ghettos, mass shootings in concentration camps and extermination camps. The Nazis targeted anyone they believed threatened their ideal of a pure Aryan race, including Jews, Roma and Sinti people, sometimes referred to as gypsies and black people, mentally or physically disabled people, gay people, political opponents, and others. Slavic people, such as those from Poland and Russia, were considered inferior and were targeted because they lived in areas needed for German expansion. Cambodia. From 1975 to 1979, the Khmer Rouge, led by Pol Pot, imposed an extremist program to reconstruct Cambodia. Millions of people died through starvation, disease and exhaustion, and thousands of people were executed. Civilian deaths in this period from execution, disease, exhaustion and starvation had been estimated at well over 2 million people. In 100 days in 1994, approximately 1 million Tutsis and moderate Hutus were murdered in the genocide in Rwanda. The genocide took place following decades of tension between Hutus and Tutsis and a recent history of persecution and discrimination against Tutsis. Tutsi men, women, children and babies were killed in their thousands in schools and churches. Frequently, the killers were people they knew. Neighbours, workmates, former friends, sometimes even relatives through marriage. Bosnia. In July 1995, with the backdrop of the ongoing war, Bosnian Serb troops and paramilitaries descended on the town of Srebrenica and began shelling it. Around 8,000 Muslim men and boys over 12 years old were murdered. The Bosnian war resulted in the death of around 100,000 people and the displacement of over 2 million men, women and children. The genocide at Srebrenica is the largest incidence of mass murder in Europe since World War II. Darfur Before the conflict, Darfur had an ethnically mixed population of around 6 million black Africans and Arabs. In 2003, a civil war began in Darfur, 
a region in the west of Sudan in northeast Africa, between the sedentary population of black African farmers and the lighter-skinned nomadic Arab population. The civil war has led to the deaths of between 200,000 and 400,000 civilians, and this figure could be much higher. Up to 2.6 million people are still displaced in Darfur. They have been forced to flee their homes to makeshift refugee camps in Darfur or Chad run by international aid agencies. Hi, I'm from St. Jude's School and the title of the poem is called What If It Were Me? I was walking through the park one day, poaching about my usual way, when I saw two shirley youths staring at me. Two shirley youths with a boy pinned to a tree. The, the youth called out, you got something to say. I bent my head low and went on my way, but something stopped me. It sounded helpless and weak. It got louder and turned into a shriek. It's, I stopped in my tracks. Who would help? Who would help me? What what hope would I have? Where where I pinned to a tree, I could now I could now hear the taunts and jeers, with words so foul that they burnt my ears. Burnt my ears. I turned on my heels and strode back to the tree where the two boys stood staring at me. Oh, it's, it's wrong and disgraceful what you have done here. It's, behave, it's behaviour like this, this, but that, like this that spreads violence and fear. Everyone's different. No two are the same. To judge someone in a fear is cause for shame. This isn't a game to share with a friend. It's up to everyone to make us an end. The youth, the youth sulked and Doff Evan noted with a glee that the boys were smiling, smiling from under the tree. Primo Levi was born a Jewish chemist in Turin. In 1947, he published If This Is a Man, perhaps the best known and most powerful Auschwitz memoir. The most prominent poem is that of Shema. Shema, you who live secure in your warm houses, who return at evening to find hot food and friendly faces, consider whether this is a man who labours in the mud, who knows no peace, who fights for a crust of bread, who dies at yes or a no. Consider whether this is a woman without hair or name, with no more strength to remember, eyes empty and womb cold, as a frog in winter. Consider that this has been, I commend these words to you, engrave them on your heart, when you are in your house, when you walk on your way, when you go to bed, when you rise, Repeat them to your children, or may your house crumble. Disease render you powerless. Your offspring avert their faces from you. Toys by Abraham Sutskever My daughter, you must care for your toys. Poor things, they're even smaller than you. Every night, when the fire goes to sleep, cover them with the stars of the tree. Let the golden pony graze the cloudy sweetness of the field. Lace up the little boy's boots when the sea eagle blows cold. Tie a straw hat on your doll and put a bell in her hand, for not one of them has a mother, and so they cry out to God. Love them. Your little princesses, I remember a cursed night when there were dolls left in all seven streets of the city and not one child. On this Holocaust Memorial Day, 76 years on from the liberation of Auschwitz, as we call to mind the six million Jewish people put to death in the Shah, we remember with them all who died as scapegoats under the Third Reich, the disabled, trades unionists, gypsies, gay men and women, and many others. We remember, too, those who suffered under other regimes, 
not for what they did, but for who they were in Rwanda, Armenia, Cambodia, the former Yugoslavia, and elsewhere. And in shame for our human weakness, we remember those who did not speak out, who knew but said and did nothing, who pretended not to know, or who followed the mob but at a distance. And we pray, loving God, we mark this day with heavy hearts, as in the horrors of history we see and acknowledge what happens when division, fear and prejudice are allowed or encouraged to flourish. Forgive us when we respond to difference with fear and hate. May we see all our sisters and brothers as equally precious children of God, and may we be given the courage in our prayers and actions to stand together with those who are suffering so that light may banish all darkness, love will prevail over hate, and good will triumph over evil. Amen. <laughs>